All right, so let's look at speak, um, the IELTS writing test task one. For your task one, as academic test taker, as someone applying to study abroad, your task one is called report or report writing. All right, so for study, your question can come from either five charts. Not. Your question can come from either pie charts, bar charts, line graph, table, histogram, pictograph, infographics. It could come from any of these. Right? You need to understand how to write the reports. The template is usually the same. Basically, to write on the major features and make comparisons. Right? Now, let's look at Gina. We need um, questions on line graph or histogram. Anyone? Question papers on either line graph or histogram, or bring the two. I'll show them different types of report writing questions. Now let's look at how it works. During your report writing, you need to understand first and foremost that it is a formal writing. Formal writing. Report writing requires you to make use of formal words and expressions because reports are formal write-ups. So do not bring in acronyms except when you have established the full meaning, perhaps in a previous sentence or in a previous paragraph. Else, don't just write acronyms alone. You have to write the full meanings of the acronym then you may choose to put the acronym in a bracket. In report writing, do not use abbreviations. You must write every word in full. Now, note that report writings are formal writings. Hence, you are meant to write your reports using past tenses. Right? Because you are reporting something that has happened. Do you understand this? I also said that report writing questions can come from either a pie chart or a bar chart or a line graph or a table. It could be histogram. It could be infographic. It could be anything. So ensure that what matters is that you are to reports the situation. And when you're making the report, you must use past tense. The major thing is you must report the major features and make comparisons based on what you are seeing on the chart. Right? In report writing, you are strongly expected to show off advanced expressions. You are strongly expected to show off advanced expressions. And to achieve advanced expressions in report writing, you have to bring in three major things. First, you have to show off linking words. You have to show off sequences. And you have to show off academic words. These are major keys you must bring in when you are writing a report. Please, you can't just write your report casually. You need to bring in these important keys when you are writing. All right, 
So what are these important keys that you're to bring in during your report writing? The important keys right here are linking words, sequencers, and academic words. So let's begin with linking words. What do you think linking words are? What are linking words? I've talked about this before, right? Linking words are those words that you use to connect or join two or more independent sentences together to become one, right? Linking words are those words you use to join or connect two or more independent sentences together to become one. Examples of linking words, we have the likes of however, meanwhile, more so, while, although, contrarily, on the other hand, these are examples of linking words that you can bring in when you are writing a report. Do you understand this? You should make use of these linking words very well when you are writing. Alright? Make use of them. Because IELTS expects you to show off compound and complex sentences. So to achieve compound and complex sentences, it is linking words that will build your sentences to become compound and complex sentences. Now let's look at sequencers. What are sequencers? These are words that are used to either begin a sentence or introduce an additional idea in a paragraph. Linking words are those words we use to either begin a sentence or a paragraph or introduce an additional idea in a paragraph. Examples of linking of um, sequencers. Examples of sequencers would be first and foremost, furthermore, additionally, consequently, subsequently, nonetheless. Notwithstanding, contrarily, summarily, conclusively, and in light of the above, these are examples of sequences that you can make use of when you are writing your report. Is that taken? Okay. Now let's go to the last key features or feature that you can bring in during your report writing. Now let's look at academic words. Very important. What are academic words? Academic words are those words that you make use of when writing a report to practically describe the movements on the charts. Academic words are those words you make use of during your report writing that help you to practically describe the movements of charts or events on the chart. or they help you to practically describe the features of the chart. Now let's, let's look at some examples of these academic words. One, rose, rose is an example. Rise.
increase. Appreciate. Highest. Recover. Recovery. Recovery. Fall. Decline. Depreciate. Depreciate. Loss. Lowest. Least. 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 Fluctuates. Fluctuates. Instability. Instability. Deep. Deep. Dramatic. Dramatic. Insignificant. Insignificant. Significant. Significant. Remarkable. Remarkable. Skyrocket. Skyrocket. Trajectory, 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 apex, apex, zenith, peak, peak. Climax, surge, surge, these are examples of academic words that you can use or you should use when you are writing a report. They help to show your advanced command of the language. And it also gives more specific descriptions of the movements on the chart, right? And they eventually help you to achieve advanced expressions. So please, make use of these academic words whenever you're writing your report. Mm -hmm. Don't just write a report using casual, using casual words, right? Okay, so let's go to the next level. Right. So here is the formula for writing a report. Formula for writing a report. Um, basically, you're meant to have four paragraphs when writing a report. The first paragraph has just two features, which are paraphrase and um, unit of measurement. Second paragraph is about overview. The third paragraph talks about comparison. Then lastly, you have the fourth paragraph, which 
requires you to have either your comparison or just a closure. Okay? So let's look at how to apply these, this formula when you are treating a report. Um, are you doing, are you going for study? Mm -hmm. For study? Mm -hmm. Are you going for study? That's a practical question. That's a practical, <coughs> excuse me, a practical report question. So um, let's have the question written here on the board so everyone will be on the same page. So here is a question we have on this piece of paper. It says, the graph below shows the spending of UK residents on visits abroad between 1993 and 2013. Then um, the other part of the question, or other part of what is written here says, summarize the information by selecting and reporting the main features and make comparisons where relevant. That's an advice to you. So part this advice will be taken care of in the formula, okay? So this is your major bone of contention. So according to this formula, what do you think is the first thing you have to do? What's the first thing to do? Hmm? Paraphrase. To paraphrase, paraphrase this question. That's the first thing. So how do we paraphrase? You need to identify the keywords in the question that you can substitute with the synonyms, right? So graph below shows spending UK residents visits abroad. These are the major things we have to paraphrase. So on in the normal question, IELTS will not mention the name of the graph. Do you understand this? The graph we are treating has its own name, right? But in a question, I have to not mention it. So when you are paraphrasing, you are required to now give the name. Please, do you understand this? What is the name of this graph? Line graph. Line graph. Is the name. Now, another thing I also would want you to understand is, in the question, it says the graph below. That's what the question says, right? And it is so because this is the question and the graph is below. Is that correct? On your answer sheet, there won't be graph below, right? Or will you draw the graph? No. There won't be graph below. So you don't paraphrase and say the line graph below. Because if the examiner looks below, there is no graph, right? So when you are paraphrasing, you don't say, you don't use the word below. So you convert this to, you bring this back here and make it give you. Do you understand this? This below comes to this position, but to paraphrase it, we're not using the word below, we're using the, the what? The giving, then you mentioned the name of the graph. Do you understand this? So, graph right here becomes what? Line graph. Exactly. So, the giving line graph. By that, examiner will not look below or above. Below. Examiner will know that it is what is given. Right? So, here we have shows. Shows, when you paraphrase shows, it gives you what? There's, there are several options you can use. You, you can say um, portrays. Remember I say shows, right? So whatever words you're bringing in should also be in the same form as shows. Portrays depicts illustrates represents 
Um, this information about these are different options of words you can use or phrases you can use to paraphrase the word show. Okay? The spending. So spending can be paraphrased to Okay. <laughs> Amount of Out money to spent. Okay. <laughs> this is what they are, this is what they <laughs> Amount of money spent or expenditure right? The giving line graph illustrates the amount of money spent by right? Or the giving line graph illustrates the expenditure of then this UK is an acronym. When you are paraphrasing, give the full name. Right? So that will give you what? United Kingdom. United Kingdom. Okay? Then residence. How do you substitute residence? Citizen. Hmm? Citizen. Ah. Everybody in this country is a citizen. Hmm? Including the Afghan Ungan number. Alright, so residents are in dwellers. Residents are inhabitants. Residents could be occupants. Not everyone residing in your village in the community. Some are just migrants, right? Okay. On visits, visits can be paraphrased to what? Visit abroad, foreign trips. Travels overseas, right? Trips or travels, I don't know. All right. Do you understand this paraphrase? So when you put all of these together, what you have? All right. So we have produced a replica of what the original question has. The graph below shows the spending of UK residents on visits abroad between 1993 and 2013. So our paraphrase says, the giving line graph illustrates the amount of money spent by indoors of the United Kingdom on trips overseas between the years 1993 and 2013. That's the paraphrase. Does it have the same information as what we have in the original question? Doesn't? Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's move to the next thing. After paraphrase, what do we have here? Units of measurement. That's the next thing, right? Now, units of measurement in IELTS. In report writing, units of measurement on questions can be kilograms. Kilometers, it can be percentage, it can be um, population. So this will involve 
numbers. It can be money. Of course, this would involve currencies. Something like dollars or pounds or euro. Right? It could also be um, it could be anything. But you should understand that on charts, you need to look at if it is graph where you have the x-axis and the y-axis. Most times, units are on this location. These are units of measurement. Huh? But the unit of measurement, or these are values actually, what you have around this part. On the axis. These will be the values. But the units of measurement may be hidden around this corner, or it may be hidden around this corner. Then of course, most times, what is written around here can be the period, duration. It could be year, it could be anything. But where you find the unit of measurement can be either at this corner or hidden at this space. It, it's not usually written boldly. So you need to look intently to locate the unit of measurement. Is this clear? Is it clear? Are you sure? Very clear. And see, is it clear? It's not clear. Huh? Don't you don't understand. It's a serious matter. It's cause for fear, friends. Okay. I said, did you understand the paraphrasing part? For units of measurement, I said, on your question paper, especially if it is a graph, you know graphs usually have x and y axis. Are you sure you know about that? Where is the x axis? Okay. Huh? Oh, <laughs> anywhere is up here. <laughs> Don't we? Where is up? Oh, Don't we? We have vertical and we have the horizontal, which is the x axis. What is the x axis? Yeah, don't you, you don't know. You should be given physics. Well, physics is the x axis. <laughs> Are you a scientist? You are? So where is the x-axis? The vertical is the x-axis. Where is the y-axis? Where is the opposite? Where is the x-axis? Huh? Oh, you're very quick. Where is the x-axis? Huh? Horizontal is x. Y is vertical. Correct. Your, your teacher tried. <laughs> Excuse me. This is y axis and here is x. Do you understand? So I said in most cases on your question paper, the units of measurements are hidden either on or towards the y-axis or at the bottom of the x-axis. Please, do we understand this? Um, here, always look intently on your question paper. Let's look at our question paper. What is the unit of measurement here? Hmm? Where? On your question paper. Mm -hmm. There is a pound symbol there. Yes, there is a pound symbol there. But it's, it's written up here, just by the corner. 
right? But that's not the only thing to mention. There is also number written there in brackets. Is that correct? Right? Mm. So your unit of measurement is billions of mm. billions of what? Pounds. Also, we are not the same thing. That's what that thing means. This this is what you have on your Christian paper, right? That means everything written on this place is in what? Billion. Billion. And the currency used to rate these figures will be what? Do you understand this? So, to write your unit of measurement, there are different templates you can bring in. To write your unit of measurement, Gina, do we have ink? Yes. Please dash me one. To write your unit of measurement alongside the paraphrased version of the question, there are, there are two templates you might want to consider. One, you can simply say, Are measured in in what? Billions of pounds. Billions of pounds. Or you can say so immediately after the paraphrase. You cite your question paper to locate or identify the unit of measurement. Once you've identified it, you simply continue with your expression. is the end of my paragraph one. Are you going for study? Are you going for study? Paragraph two, overview. Your overview in report writing requires you to give a holistic or general descri description of the chart. Right? You look carefully and study the chart, then make, make your sentence or sentences to describe what you can see on the chart. Do you understand? But when you are making the description, do not bring anything that has to do with value. Maybe 100 billion pounds, 70 pounds. Don't bring in anything like that. Students, are you, do you understand what I'm saying? You have to understand when you are busy, you can ask all of you. 
this one lecture has P C in the lecture hall. What are you saying? The Nigerian education is bad. <laughs> yeah, the course. I said when you are writing your second paragraph, give a description of this particular chart, but don't mention any value. Don't say anything relating to pounds, billions of pounds. Don't mention anything. Do you understand? This? Look at what we are going to do. When you are making your descriptions, there are four major features you are advised very strongly to factor in. The first is bringing subjects or objects as, as um, indicated on your Christian paper. Bringing period or duration as you can find on the Christian paper. Identify the keys if available. Then talk about the highest, the lowest, or the similarities that you can find on the Christian paper. These three features you should try as much as possible to factor in when you are writing your second paragraph. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's now begin. For my paragraph two, I will begin with the word overall. That's why you have it in bracket right here. Overall, Alright, so here is my paragraph two. You went somewhere yesterday. You gave me just a quick. But it was not hot. Oh. But it worked. You see? <laughs> Alright, so if you look at the board, you would um look up um actually cleaned those four areas, but we were able to cover them. I said you should factor in the subject or objects, the duration or period, the keys if available, and the highest, lowest or similarity. So let's look at these. Overall, the chart indicates that between the years 1993 and 2013, residents of the UK, we have to use UK because we've established the United Kingdom here in the first paragraph, right? Yeah, yeah. So residents of the UK expanded, I hope the word expanded is correct, right? Mm -hmm. Expanded. Hmm? Yes. Expanded their monies. Is there anything like monies? Is it correct? Monies. Huh? Okay, are you sure? Monies. Okay, so there are two ways you can write that favor. You either you write monies, plural, or you write. Money is plural. Mm -hmm. That is correct. Right? So, um, expected their money is on four categories. When you look at the chart, you see that there are four categories here. Some, if I didn't tell you, you might think that these lines are part of the normal lines. In IELTS report writing, nobody tells you anything. You should look intently and decipher things on the chart. Right? So they are testing your ability to pay attention to details. They only tell you to summarize the report and make uh, comparisons where necessary. That's the only thing in the case of the you. But they are testing you. So there are four different categories. They are outlined here. So um, these four categories include holiday. So you will see holiday here, right? Then you have business, it's also there. You have visit friends or relatives, it's also there. And you have miscellaneous. More so, each of the each of the aforementioned areas of your spending was represented by different keys, such as thick, dark, black line. So when you look at your chart, you see that the line 
before the holiday is a dark one, right? You need to follow up, check your paper so you understand what you're doing. Then for business, it was represented by dotted line. Can you see that? Then um, for visit friends or relatives, short broken line. Wild miscellaneous has long broken line. Okay? And then lastly, we have importantly, it is also evident that the most or the highest amount of money was spent on holiday while miscellaneous recorded the lowest expenditure. This is all you want to describe about it. Dolly, is it clear to you? It's not clear. Is this all about their, their writing, their report writing? This is just paragraph two. Mm -hmm. okay. They are counting. That's not their counting. Their own work is different from ours. Okay, well done. <laughs> so, this is what I just did. Have you understood paragraph one? Now, for paragraph two, you have to give an overview a holistic or general description or analysis of the chart. So to analyze what you're seeing, you need to factor in four major things, which are talk about the subject and object. What's the subject in this part in this particular question? The subject. Subject is the UK residents. They are the subject. What are the objects? The areas they spent their money. The four areas that are the objects. So you want to establish that the chart shows that the American president subject, expended their funds on four areas when they traveled to various countries. Right? Subject. The objects. And you must list those objects. That's why we have them there. Business, vacation, visit friends or relatives, and the Do you understand? However, Within the period of their trip, ranging from 1993 to 2013, that is the duration and period, it is evident that the highest spending was recorded to be on holiday. Why the least amount of money was expended on this image? Notwithstanding, each of those four areas was represented by different keys, such as Thick, dark, black line, dotted line, sharp broken line, and long broken line. Dolly, do you understand? Yeah, sure. Okay. So that's it. And this is the end of your paragraph two. Now, paragraph three is where your work begins. This is where the job begins. Okay. All right. So, paragraph three is about comparison. You now need to look at the different features these lines the way the lines are moving you need to now begin to describe right tell them you are busy you should come come again later right? now how do you describe please you need to write and you need to write fast so that i can face those going for job are we ready yes begin your third paragraph with the word comparatively Comparatively, <laughs> in the year 1993, residents of the United Kingdom or inhabitants or occupants, inhabitants of the United Kingdom, spent their funds on holiday during their visits overseas. With a record or record of 
the record of nine billion pounds. Without money, you can buy like ten million. Sign in figures or in money? In figures. <laughs> Have you written 9 billion pounds? It, however, experienced a gradual but steady rise. It, however, experienced a gradual but steady rise. Up to the year 1998, when it recorded a significant amount of about 12 billion pounds. Hmm? No. No worry, just watch. You understand? when it recorded a significant amount of about 12 billion pounds. Written, full stop. Remarkably, the spending of the UK residents recorded a trajectory rise. You see those academic words are now coming in. Recorded a trajectory rise up to the year 2008. Up to the year 2008. where it experienced its climax or peak or zenith or apex depending on the choice of words you feel is best climax apex zenith peak surge with a record of about 25 billion pounds. However, there was a slight decline. Between 2008 and 2009. <laughs> With a loss amounting to about 22 billion pounds. Thereafter, the spending on holiday experienced some level of instability. The spending on holidays experience some level of instability. We are lost. Huh? With, with an amount or with a record of about, I said about 22 billion pounds. Then I said thereafter, the spending on holiday experienced some level of instability between 2009 to 2012. Meanwhile, there was a slight recovery, a slight recovery between 2012 and 2013, 
amounting to about 23, 23.5 billion pounds. Full stop. That's the end of paragraph 3. Okay, paragraph 4. Furthermore, furthermore, it is evident that business, comma, visit friends or relatives, comma, and miscellaneous. All started off in the year 1993. All started off in the year 1993 with the rates of about Two billion pounds, comma. One billion pound, comma, and zero point five billion pounds, respect respectively. Notwithstanding, full stop. Notwithstanding, comma, not capital N. There's supposed to be one word done of them joined together. Notwithstanding, Each of the three categories witnessed some gradual increase. From 1993 up to the year 2003, from 1993 up to the year 2003, when Miss Daniels recorded its highest its highest spending by UK residents. Its highest spending by UK residents. Amounting to about 1.7 billion pounds. However, visit friends or relatives. Witnessed its apex in the year two thousand and eight with the record of about. Four point eight billion pounds. With a record of about four point eight billion pounds.
whereas business had its climax in the year 2013. Recording about recording about five billion pounds. On the basis of similarities, on the basis of similarities. It was recorded that between 2000, um, between 2009 to 2012, the four categories, the four areas of the spending of UK residents during their trips abroad experienced similar curve between 2009 and 2012. The four areas recorded a similar curve. can be deduced. Therefore, it can be deduced that the highest amount of money was spent on vacation as It's evident that UK residents enjoyed traveling. While miscellaneous had the least amount of money. All right, ladies and gentlemen, at this juncture, this is how the report should be structured. All right? Do well to go through that particular um, report and use that skeletal uh, use that skeletal note to tackle any kind of report page. You see the same thing, four paragraphs. The first is your introduction, where you paraphrase the question and establish the need of measurement. The second paragraph is your overview, where you give a holistic analysis of what the charts looks like. The third and fourth paragraphs are where you give your comparisons. Alright? So that's what your report looks like. Okay? So I will give you um, a question. When you get home, time yourself 20 minutes only and write the report. Bring back on Friday. Alright? Alright, so good luck to you. That's it for today.